Hello, hello. Good evening, guys. How are you? Hello. How are hello. you? Hi, Eduardo. How are you today? I am doing really great. What about you? Doing Danny, you have disconnected the Bluetooth. <laughs> yes. Hey, you're you, Jose. <laughs> Hi, Mauricio. Hi, Abigail. How are you? Hi, Jose. How are you? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do you guys feel that there is a little bit more wind tonight? It's like it's been like windy. It's not raining, but it's not so hot either. It's a little bit windy. At least that's in San Salvador. I don't know the rest of the country. <laughs> what about you? Where are you? Where you are? How is the weather going? Eduardo? Uh, uh, what is the word that you had used before? Oh. No, I was telling you that today the weather is windy. Like windy. Uh, here in San Salvador, it's windy. It's not hot and it's not raining, but at least we have some wind, right? So it's windy. Windy. Mm -hmm. Windy, yeah. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool. Not hot, but it's not raining either. What about you? How is the weather in your area? Uh, unfortunately, here in the uh, weather... In the place that I live, I live, it's a normal day it's with the about the weather because uh, all the time I have to work behind the sun and the, the weather is all the time hot. Oh it's yeah. It's terrible, but and the past where day you will feel uh, accustomed. You get used to it. It's right. That's right. Normal weathering of top of there is hot. <laughs> anything, anything that is not hot, it's it's a miracle. <laughs> Hearing about I really, I really, uh, I really like the the, the yeah, yeah. raining days, but yeah, I, I love really... raining days. But we don't have the, so many of those here. <laughs> so bad. Okay, so for tonight, guys, uh, we were talk. Remember, we're gonna we're gonna try to begin each class with using some questions, conversation questions, like extra right, extra conversation questions, and in that regard. For tonight, the topic is going to be prejudice. Remember last night, the topic for the conversation questions was ambition, right? What is ambition to you? Is it always good? Is it always bad? What do you think about it, right? But in this case, tonight, we're going to be talking about prejudice, right? What is prejudice to you, okay? Um, so we're going to be thinking about it. We're going to be discussing those questions. So... Um, this for this scenario because there are a few questions fewer than just okay we're not gonna go to the break rooms we're gonna do it here in the main session one by one you're going to give your opinion okay um you can select one or two of the questions okay you can select one or two from all these questions and make sure to write your answer make sure to write your answer get it ready and then you share the answer with us Okay, so this one is going to be individual. I'm going to give you guys five minutes. Choose one of the questions or two, depending on how fast you write, and write the answer, and then you share it, okay? So right now it's 8.06, I'll give you until 8.11. You have to select one of the questions in here. It can be any. You decide, select one question, and write the answer according to your opinion. And then in five minutes, you share the opinion with everyone, okay? You can select, what is prejudice to you? Why does prejudice exist? Um, in any of the other questions, right? Select one, write the answer, and then you share the answer with us. Again, this is individual, so everybody has to write your answer to the question that you select. And we're, okay, Marcus. And I'm gonna give you five minutes. I'm going to be here. If you need help or if you have questions to answer one question, let me know. Okay, you have five minutes to answer your question, whichever you select.
for the ones that are just connecting, um, you have to select one of the questions that you have here. It can be any question, just select whichever you prefer. And you have to write down your answer and then you share it with us. We're just giving a few more minutes for everyone to finish writing their answers, okay? Select one of the questions and answer it with your opinion. It can be any question, okay? Make sure you write it and then you share it with us when we begin. Okay, so we're gonna begin sharing our answers already. It, for the ones that have it ready, the other ones you can finish writing right. and share. Okay, the purpose of this is that you share your opinion, your answers on a, whichever question you select. And the idea is that you do it using your own vocabulary that you own, right? And try to do it as best as you can. For example, um, in my opinion, what is prejudice? I selected that one. In my opinion, prejudice is the action of making yourself an opinion of a, about another person or about any situation. It can be a personal situation, right? To me, prejudice is when you form your own opinion about something or someone without even trying to know if it's if your opinion is correct, right? Without checking if you have. Um, all the information. So to me, that is prejudice. When you form yourself an opinion about something or someone without knowing anything about that someone or something. Okay, so let me hear your answers, guys, to the question that you selected. Raise your hand so I can hear you. Hear you, see you. <laughs> Do we have a volunteer that wants to share the first answer? Are you ready, Jose? Yes, Miss. <laughs> okay, go ahead, please. Which one did you like? The first one. Okay. What is a prejudice? In my opinion, is the fact of judge to any person or being judged before being compared about what are you judging? Mm -hmm. In this case, I guess that we do it because we don't have the you no know, empathy with the other ones. Also, I guess we have to be a better listener before a, a speaker. That's right. That's a good answer. Very good. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's see the others. Do you have your answers ready? Let's see. What about you, Abigail? Do you have your answer ready? Which question did you select, Abigail? Mm -hmm. You're in mute, Abigail. Okay, and if not, we're gonna listen to Eduardo, please. Go ahead, Eduardo. What question, sorry? Which one did you select? Ah, okay. Are women workers often promoted at their at their workplace? Okay, in the 
orange show that I had, I I won't say the name, but mm -hmm. yes, in this case, uh, the girls or the women uh, has more opportunities than than a man. Oh. It doesn't matter that is that uh, we the women had a a more a degree or more experience or more skills. Um, just because they are women, they are. Yes, she will get more opportunity. Yes, all the time. I don't know what is uh, what is the uh, the 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 reason, but yes, and I was uh, in in my case, it 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 doesn't matter about about that. But all the time when you are working, you see the all the all things that happen in the in in the place that I work. But I think is it is no. Fire. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that's right. And that's a good point. What I got just mentioned, right? Prejudice or injustice, gender injustice, it can be both sides, right? It can be for men and it can be for women, right? It can be to the other extreme. Okay. So let's see the other ones. Let me hear your your answers. Which questions did you select? And what answer do you come up with? Carla, please. Good evening. Uh, uh, I choose the are there general basic issues in your country in what are they? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think yes, because in this country, uh, in this time, <laughs> uh, it's still assumed that women how to do things or men uh, to do things. Mm -hmm. It's right. That, that's true, right? Gender role bias issues is, for example, um, the case that Eduardo was mentioning. Gender can be women, it can be female or male for men, right? Um, in, some, in some places, just because you're a woman, you have more privileges than men. But in other companies, if you're a woman, you don't have privileges like the men do, right? So it really depends where you are. Each company has different cultures and different rules. But yes, I think we still have that problem here, right? Gender role bias issues. That's what we call them. Thank you, Gala. Very good. Let me hear the other ones. What's your opinion? Which question did you select? And what's your answer, guys? Let's see, Juan Carlos, do you have your answer ready? Which one did you uh, select? Good evening. Yes, good yes. evening. Um, okay. Uh, I see, bueno, my question is uh, why uh, why does prejudice exist? exist? I don't know. I, I think the, the, the pre prejudice. Uh -huh. has, uh, you exist uh, for uh, some reason, for example, um, in uh, certain groups or, or people are uh, uh, are a certain way. Uh, for example, I think the the, the the people in Germany, so mm -hmm. the German are are a people very cool, for example, or or the Chinese eat a, a, a box or, a, or, or animals, for example. Um, or believe that uh, uh, race, for example, or, or oriental, oriental sex, sex, sexual, sexual mm -hmm. orientation. And, sexual orientation, uh -huh. Orientation or... or or, or some class are uh, superior or inferior uh, the other, for example. Um, I don't know, or ex exclude a, a, a some people, for example, for su uh, skin color, for example. For their skin color. Uh -huh. Yes, I think uh, <laughs> it's for, for that. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Prejudice. Exists because it has been happening from 
long, long time ago, right? It's not something from today. And every country goes for judges in different sections, in different ways, right? Here in El Salvador, we also have for judges, even for skin color, as you were saying, right? Or sexual orientation related. So yeah, it, it is a, it's a reality. Thanks for sharing. Um, what about you, Emerson? Do you have, did you select a question to answer? I did you guys oh, listen yeah. to em Emerson? <laughs> Hello. Hi. No, we just select you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't hear <laughs> you that. Okay, don't okay. worry, no problem. Thank you. Okay, does anyone else have a question from the from the chart that they want to answer? Let's see. This is your opportunity to practice your English outside of the work related topic, right? Remember in real life, you never know what you're going to be talking about every day in English. So you got to be ready for all kinds of topics. All right. So if we don't have anyone, that's fine. We're just gonna continue. We're gonna, I'm gonna take attendance. So please be ready to be here or present when you he hear your name, okay? So we have Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Dairo Jonathan Puente. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Me. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, Miss. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jonathan Jose Gonzalez. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta. Here. Thank you. Jose Cesar Lemos. Here. Thank you. Juan Carlos Herrera Delgado. Good teacher. Thank you. Juan José Herrera Alvarenga. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Present. Mayra Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present. Thank you, Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez. All right, so let me just share with you the presentation just a moment. So let me load the presentation. Okay, we are going to review the punctuation, some of the punctuation used, right? Punctuation used. Okay. So I'm going to need volunteers. Each person is going to read the punctuation name, the use, and the example, right? Punctuation name, what is the use, and what is the example. So each person is going to read two. Okay, first person is going to read full stop and comma. Second person is going to read question mark and exclamation mark. Number three is going to read semicolon and the colon. Four, quotation mark and apostrophe. And the fifth person, the hyphen and the bracket. Okay, so we need five volunteers to read. Do we have volunteers here? Raise your hand if you want to read. You're literally just going to read what you see. Okay, Emerson, help us with full stop and comma, please. Um, we need four more persons. We need four more volunteers. Cesar, help us please with question mark and exclamation mark. Carlita, help us with semicolon and the colon, please. We need two more people. We need two more volunteers to read. Eduardo, please help us with the quotation marks and the apostrophe. And we need 
need one more volunteer for hyphen and brackets. Do we have one more person for hyphen and bracket? You're going to read only. Jose, please help us with the last two. Let's begin, Elsa. Full stop and a sentence. Mary brought her bike to the playground. Coma, separate. Items in a list. I like re reading books, listening to music, and studied English. All right. So the full stop is what we call punto y aparte, right? That's called a full stop in English. And the use is to finish a sentence, to end a sentence, right? For example, Mary rode her bike to the playground, full stop, right? And then the comma, as Emerson was reading, right, is to separate items in a list. For example, books, listening to music, studying English, right? So when you're separating, you use the comma. And then when you finish your idea, the full stuff, okay? And what is the other use for the comma, Emerson? Show a break in the sentences as the, as the day came to end. And the firefighters put out the last part. Mm -hmm. Correct. So there are two uses for the comma in a sentence. The first one, to separate items in a list, right? I like to cook, eat, dance, comma, 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 right? But I can also use commas in a sentence to show a break in a sentence, okay? As the day came to an end, break the sentence. The firefighters put out the last part, okay? The more we practice, comma, the better we become, all right? So when you're breaking ideas in one sentence, you use the comma to separate them. Let's read the other two ones, please. Question mark, ask a question. Where are you from? Exclamation mark, emphasis a strong feeling. Whoa, today has been awesome. Is that teacher? You missed the question mark, right? Did you read the question mark? The question mark, yes. Question okay. mark. Ask a question. What are you from? Mm -hmm. All right. So that one, I think it's a little bit obvious right for all of us <laughs> because we already use it very frequently right? when you whenever you're using a doing a question in english you just add the question mark at the end right it's different because in spanish we have opening question mark and closing question mark but in english we just have one at the end right so just for you to remember that and then the exclamation mark this is just to show emphasis right to show surprise wow right exclamation mark. Today has been awesome, exclamation mark. And it can be in all kinds of things. It can be positive or negative. For example, wow, you are really bad at mathematics, right? And you'll use exclamation mark. <laughs> so you can use it in different ways. It's not necessarily for positive, right? Let's go with semicolon and the colon. <clears throat> semicolon. Link. Elements of a sentence. Uh, my daughter is a teacher. My son is a doctor. Uh, colon. <laughs> colon. Oh, <laughs> introduce yeah. a list. Introduce, introduce a list. You have two choices. Uh, finish to work today or lose the contract. Thank you. So, semicolon is lo que nosotros llamamos en español punto y coma, right? Semicolon. And it's very similar to this, to the comma. The step that the comma separates items, the semicolon links items in a sentence, right? My daughter is a teacher, my son is a dog. In this one, you could use a comma or you could use a semicolon. Both are correct. And then the colon, lo que llamamos dos puntos en español, right? Introduce a list. You have two choices, colon, and you start with the list, right? 
Let's go with quotation marks and apostrophe, please. Question marks, right? Quotation marks. Quotation marks, okay. Quotation marks. Show what it said, what it said, sorry. I work in Italy, said Jimmy. In apostrophe, show ownership or missing letters. Since performance Chance. at... Sean's performance. Chance, as is mm -hmm. performance at a school has really improved. Perfect. So quotation mark. It's literally Very that. <laughs> um oh I have an example. Sorry. Read it, please. Okay. They're going to the movies tonight. Thank you. Okay, so the quotation mark, right? Um if they are written, you call them quotation marks, right? Si están escritas, le llamamos quotation. Si solo lo vamos a hacer, este gesto, se llaman air quotes. Air quotes. Meaning comillas imaginarias, right? The air quotes. Okay? Pero si las escribimos, se llaman quotation marks. And they show what is it. I work in Italy, right? Like that. Apostrophe shows ownership or missing letters, depending on the context. For example, in the first one, Sean's performance. This apostrophe is showing possession. It's called a possessive noun. Sean's performance, o sea, el desempeño de Sean, right? In this case, it's showing the uh, possession. And in this one, is separating missing letters, okay? We use the apostrophe to make short sentences, oh, right? In, in lugar de decir, they are going, we use the apostrophe, they are going, right? So different scenarios, same use of quotation of apostrophe. And let's finish with the hyphen and the brackets. Hyphen. Join words together. My eight year old boy loves reading. Bracket. Set of less important details. The two brothers, Richard and Sims, were learning how to play guitar. All right. Hyphen es lo que nosotros llamamos guión, el guión, ¿ok? Um, el guión bajo se llama underscore, underscore, pero el guión normal es hyphen, ¿ok? And it's to join words together para unir palabras, right? My eight year old, ¿ok? And the brackets, which is what we call, we also call them parentheses. So you can call them brackets or parentheses, same thing, right? They show a set of less important details, right? Para encerrar ideas específicas, o que son menos importantes, right? Now, keeping these rules in mind, we're going to check the uh, homework for week three, day four, and day five, which belong to this week, okay? So, give me one moment. I'm going to share the screen with you. But I wanted to give you the punctuation mark first so you can know how to use them and then we can we can do the homework. So you have first set homework number four and number five we were missing yesterday, okay? So let me just check in here. Unit three, warehouse, right? And it says for oh we did yesterday one two and three tonight we're doing four and five okay so the instruction said imagine you are a warehouse manager and you are experiencing problems with inventory counts and misplaced product which of the following issues would you solve first you're going to rank the issues from one least affects productivity to five most effects for activity. Eduardo, please. You can begin with number one. <clears throat> okay. Inaccurate receipts and purchase orders. Mm -hmm. Remember, one list affects productivity, 
five most of X productivity. So inaccurate receipts and purchase orders, que no son exactos, right? Inaccurate is inexact. Entonces, recibos y órdenes de recibo inexact. How important can it be in the rank order, right? Then we have number two, ya lo vamos a ir bien. Lack of communication between employees. Lack of cooperation between departments. Time management and warehouse space and organization. Okay, which one is of this part that you see here? Which is the one that most affects productivity in a warehouse? What what affects productivity the most in a warehouse? Inaccurate receipt, lack of communication between employees or cooperation between departments. I in my opinion it's so difficult to because I think everything affects at the same time. <laughs> it's it's true. It it's so difficult be. to to because you need to solve the those problems ASAP. But maybe I think the. Okay, let's check what the platform has to say on this. Okay, so according to the platform, this is the order yeah, you want to use. Remember, you can take a picture of this, you can use a screenshot, or you can write the answers, whatever works best for you, right? So for the first one, inaccurate receipt is number three, importance. Okay, it affects the productivity, but it's not the most affected. Number two, lack of communication. That is number five, right? It affects the effect productivity, but not so much. But yeah, it moved the most, right? Number three, lack of cooperation between departments is the second most of, that most affects productivity, right? Then number four would be number two, and number five would be number one. Okay. Warehouse space and organization doesn't affect productivity so much as the others. Okay. So again, take a picture or take a screen, whatever works for you. Just make sure that you use what you are seeing on the screen right now. Okay. So I don't want to hear nobody telling me I miss, I don't know how to do this. I'm literally giving you the answers, please. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go with the last homework for the week. Well, for the week three, not for the week. So in this one, it says, read about a warehouse safety procedures. Then classify them into the following categories by selecting the letters. Okay, And you have this in here. Again, I'm just going to show you guys the answers because I don't want you to be losing time all night on this. So general housekeeping will be a and G. Okay, take a picture or the screenshot, but make sure you're doing. Okay. Number two, false and other preventable mishap. But letter B and A. Okay. Number three, manual lifting. Letter C and E. And number four, well, we just have three here. So those are the ones. Make sure you answer them exactly the way you're seeing it, right? Don't come telling me, Miss, I don't know what to do here because I am literally giving you the answers. You all just have to do is take a picture or a screenshot or write it down, right? whichever works best for you. Okay. Carla, please. Uh I saw the progress with uh, this question, this homework, mm -hmm. but only have a seventy percent. Oh my god, seventy percent! No, we don't. We don't accept that. <laughs> okay, we're going to do it again from from the first one. Okay, and I'll just show you the the answers fast because I'm really interested in you having complete scores, right? So no. if you can uh -huh, if you can take a picture or, or a screenshot, 
So you can do it again. In in the okay, number four and number five. That's the first homework for the week three. Okay. Now we're going to check homework number two for the for week three again. Okay. okay. I'm going to show you the answers, guys, because we don't want to lose much time here. And so you can just do it in your house, right? So number 3.3, take the pictures. Number four and number five. Then we're going to homework number three from the third week. And again, make sure to take pictures or write it down, whatever works better for you. Okay, number one. Y acá ustedes tienen dos opciones. Pueden contestar con la primera versión, right? Él dice, pueden contestar con esta o pueden contestar con la segunda o con esta otra, la de abajo, right? Más que todo lo hacen, lo que quieren es que se fijen a dónde está poniendo punto y coma, coma, punto final, right? Acá lo que les están pidiendo es la puntuación. Entonces la tienen que reescribir con todos los elementos que ven ahí. O lo pueden hacer según la dos que en vez de punto y coma ocupa una coma al principio. ¿Qué ustedes escogen? En la dos, igual les da dos versiones. Pueden escoger la primera, esta, o pueden escoger la segunda, usando los signos de puntuación de cada una. Eso es lo que están evaluando en esta actividad, la puntuación. ¿Ok? So just make sure you use them correctly. And then on number three, Mismo escenario, en la número 3 les da dos opciones. Pueden poner esa. Ok, usando esta combinación. Semicolon, coma, and the last full stop, right? O tienen la segunda opción, la que está ahí abajo. Ustedes buscó. Right. Para la número 4 solo tenemos una opción. You just have one option, so... Make sure you use all the punctuations correctly, right? And, here. and then for number five, we have two options again. Ustedes escogen cuál funciona mejor para ustedes. Esta, hasta acá, con esta puntuación, o esta, con esta puntuación. Que esos son los elementos que están evaluando la Okay. So yeah, I... I uh -huh. I have like all other questions. Uh -huh. Tell me. Uh, in the unit one, number seven, uh -huh. I I write, I wrote, uh, uh, como usted dijo, que el día siempre me da error. Oh, pero eso no importa. <laughs> Les tendría que quedar en 96. En vez de decir, uh -huh, le pero, va a quedar en 96 con eso. Uh -huh. Pero todas me dan error. Ah, no, ahí sí no. Ahí sí no es el sistema. <risa> ¿Cuál tarea es? Ya, no sé si le puedo compartir. Eh, solo dígame si es la 1.7. La 1.7. Ajá, lo escribí igual, 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 como me os había dicho. Y siempre me derrotó. Mm, no, pero no le puedo dar error en todas. <risa> una una sí, sí es eh, válido. Que, ajá. O sea, ajá. una sí es la plataforma. Porque, porque varios reportaron que había una que no se las agarraba, aunque la ponían bien. Que era la dos, creo. Pero de ahí todas las demás tienen que hacerlas. Uh -huh. Ustedes las copian tal cual se las me estoy mostrando uh -huh. ahí, ahí en pantalla. Sí. Y, eh, tiene que asegurarse de los espacios. A veces si usted le da un espacio de más, ya no se la toma como correcta. ¿Ok? O si escribo mayúsculas donde no es, o minúsculas donde no va, 
etcétera. Si le pongo punto final, si se fija, acá no la llevo. Entonces, cosas así. Tal cual como lo están viendo ahí. Para sí. que les puedan subir. Si ya lo tomaron, le voy a decir esto en español, si ya tomaron las tareas de la clase 1 y la, de la semana 1 y la semana 2 y no tienen el 100% o el 96% en la 1, en retómenlas, retómenlas y suban su porcentaje para que les pueda, les pueda valer, ¿ok? Y aquí, y, si necesitan ayuda con alguna otra, pues me dejan saber. Y era el punto. <risa> Bueno, lo intenté sin punto y siempre me da error y ahorita sí me da... ¿Sí se lo aceptó? Uh -huh. mm, el punto sí. es sin punto, entonces. Ok, eso ya. Y, y hay tareas que pide el punto. Eso ya, es depende de irlas probando, pero sí tomen en cuenta las que yo les estoy mostrando. Ah, okay. Okay. Yes, sí. ¿Alguien más tiene alguna otra con la que tenga dudas o dificultades? Ahora es cuando, joven. Yes, no. Okay, then we are going to continue with the students' manual in this scenario. All right, so do you see the students' manual now? Ya ven el manual. Okay, here on page 23, we have this extra, match, match the logistics services to the corresponding meaning. Okay, so I'm going to need four volunteers to read. Okay, one, you're going to read this part and then you're going to select which of these corresponds. Okay, so we need four volunteers to read in this scenario. Raise your hand if you want to read this. Okay, Carlita, if you could help us reading the first one, please. Emerson, if you can help us reading number two. Cesar, help us reading number three, please. And if possible, Juan Carlos, help us reading number four. Okay, and you select the correct. Carlita, please read the first one. Okay, a company that organizes shipment for corporations to get goods from the manufacturer to market customer and final point of distribution mm -hmm. so a company yeah, that organizes right. a company that organizes shipments for corporations to get goods goods son bienes para obtener bienes to get goods from the manufacturer to a market or to a customer or to a final point of distribution Okay, I think is letter B, freight forwarding service. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, right? But we can check it later. Let's read number two. Provide a point system to the score green building design and construction. Okay, this one says provides a point system to score green building design and construction i think i think that the lead certification a point system da un sistema de puntos para medir green building and design and construction right number three please products from a supplier are distributed directly to a customer or retail chain with marginal to no handling or store time. Mm -hmm. Products from a supplier are distributed directly to the customer or the retail chain with marginal to no handling time or no storage time. Uh, uh, what? I think it's the cross docking capability. That's okay. I think. Okay, we're going to discuss it. And then the last one, please. 
Okay, uh, set of products to recover and protect a business IT infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure mm -hmm. in the event or a disaster. Uh, I can see disaster recovery plan. Correct, right? Mm -hmm. So I believe that's the way it's gonna end up. So listen, before we go with the other section with this one, we're going to go to the presentation again. And I want to review a topic with you, okay? So I'm going to review this grammar topic, two versus four, okay? We're gonna be checking this. So we're gonna need volunteers to read, okay? What is the difference between two and four? And can you use them the same or do they mean the same? Can they be used in the same scenarios, right? So that's what we're gonna check right now. So I'm gonna need volunteers. One person for this slide, one person for this one, another for this one, and none for this one, okay? So we're gonna be checking the rules and the uses of how to use verb two and four, okay? Preposition two and preposition four, right? How to use it in English sentence. So for example here, take, pay attention to these two sentences. Can you bring some flowers for Mary? And the second one, can you bring some flowers to Mary, right? These sentences, they have different meaning. If we only read it like that without paying attention, we might not know the difference, right? Maybe we cannot say it. But in this case, it's the perfect opening entrance for us to check the difference, okay? So, how to use two and four in English sentence? One volunteer to read this part. Um, Cesar, please. How to use two and four in English sentence? Two and four are commonly used as preposition, changing a preposition such as using two in the place of four can completely alter the meaning of a sentence. Sometimes if you use the wrong word, you'll get a sentence that isn't grammatically correct. So let's begin by talking about one of the most common and most confusing use of two and four. All right, so it says, right? They can be, they are both just as prepositions, right? but it can alter the meaning if we don't use them correctly. For example, if I say, I am learning English for I want to get, for get a better job. I am learning English for get a better job. In that case, I am not speaking correctly, right? I should be saying, I am learning English to get a better job, right? So we're gonna check the difference and when do we use which, okay? We need two volunteers for this slide. First person reads the introduction and the first example, and the other person reads the last three examples. We need two volunteers for this. You're literally only going to read, okay? Carlita, help us with the introduction and the first example. And do we have another volunteer for the last three examples? Or if you think you can read it all, Carlita? Okay. Go ahead, please. Uh, using two versus four to talk, up, to talk about reasons and purpose. We frequently use the preposition two and four to talk about why somebody did something. Let's look at a few examples. Uh, why did you travel to London? I traveled to London to improve my English. Uh, what do you, what did she buy a cake? She bought a cake for her brother's birthday. Why are you going home? I'm going home to feed my cats. Uh, why did you go to the museum yesterday? I went to the museum for a lecture on mother art. All right. So 
as you can see, both prepositions can be used to talk about why somebody does or did something. Okay? But they are not used the same way. They can be used for the same purpose, but not the same way. Pay attention to this one. In this case, I traveled to London to, and you have a verb. In this case, she bought a cake for, and what is continuing? It's not a verb. This is not a verb, right? So you can use preposition for. In this one, I'm going home to feed my cat. To is followed by a verb. And then again, I went to the museum for a lecture or mother I. A lecture is not a verb, right? So you can use preposition for. So that's giving you an idea to begin with. Right? When are you going to use it? I need one volunteer to read this slide, please. Let's see. Emerson, please. In a sentence like this, two and four, means the same things, but they aren't used the same way. For example, if you say, I am going to, I going to home for feed my cat, my cat, that will be incorrect. You need it to use to. <laughs> so how do you see, how do you know when to use to? And when, when to use for, it means things complete, complicated, but the answer is actually very simple. Use to when the reason of the purpose, purpose is a verb. Use for when the reason or purpose is a noun. Thank you very much. Okay, listen guys, when you want to explain why something happens or why somebody does want something, you can use to or you can use for to explain it. The difference is that the to can only be followed by a verb. The reason of the purpose is a verb, then you can use to. For example, I do exercise to be healthy. Be is a verb, to be healthy. Okay, or I can say, I do exercise for my mother because my mother, I do exercise for my mother to help her do it, right? So in this case, my mother is not a verb. So I say for, right? I do exercise for my mother. So si es un sustantivo, ocupo for. Si es un verbo, ocupo to. Cuando voy a explicar el porqué de algo, right? We're going to explain the why do you, why do you work? <laughs> Why do you work? Ah, I work to buy food. To, because the verb buy, it's an action verb, right? To buy food. Pero eso voy a hacer trabajo para mis papás, por ejemplo. I work for my family. I work for my parents. En ese caso se ocupa for. Porque lo que sigue no es un verbo, es un sustantivo. It's a noun, right? So, in Spanish, los dos mes, las dos proposiciones las puedo utilizar para explicar el porqué de algo, o por qué alguien hace algo. Pero tú la voy a ocupar cuando la explicación es un verbo y for cuando es cualquier otra cosa que no sea verbo. ¿Okay? Entonces, vengo yo y me, para acordarme, no puedo ocupar for cuando la explicación, la razón es un verbo. Y aquí decía, I'm going home for feed my cat. No se puede porque feed es un verbo. Tiene que ser to. I'm going home to feed my cats. Pero si yo dijera, I'm going home for my cats, ahí sí puedo, right? Si no hay ningún verbo siguiéndolo. Okay? And we have some examples in here. I need another volunteer to read, please. Yes, Eduardo, go ahead. Let's look at some more example of two and four. You go side by side. Okay. I bought a present to give to Swara on her birthday. In this case, a bear. And the other one is, I bought a present for Sarah's birthday. Birthday. 
I drink coffee to feel more away. I drink coffee for each wonderful test. test. I exercising to stay healthy. I exercise it for my health. Once you have learned the rule, using two and four becomes much easier. Now that you you have mastered the hardest part, let's look at some more at some other use of two and four. Thank you. So guys, here you have examples one next to the other, so you can see the difference. When I use a verb to give explanation, a reason, it's two. When I use a noun or anything that is not a verb, you can use preposition for. Okay. This is the first scenario where you use those prepositions to give explanation or to explain the reason why someone does something or why something happened. But it's not the only scenario where you are going to use those prepositions. Okay. So this one, try to memorize it. Este es como el uso más común de esas preposiciones. If this is the most common use. So try to memorize it so that you don't make the mistake when speaking, okay? And then we have other uses for the same preposition, okay? And we need a volunteer to read this one. Okay. We need a volunteer for this one to read. Y noten la diferencia. Por ejemplo, yo les digo, I need a volunteer to read the next slide. O, I need a volunteer for the next slide. Right? Both two and four, diferente forma de decir. Okay? Um, let's see. Who wants to help us here? Um, let's see. Let's see. Do we have a volunteer to read this part? Jose, would you help us, please? Are you there, Jose? Yes, you yes, yes, yes. Go yes. ahead, please. Okay. Other use of the word too. Here are some of the situations where we commonly use to. Use to when talking about movement or change in direction. To is used as a preposition if there is movement, a transference or change in direction from one point to another. For example, I need you to take these books to Mari. We're going to Paris next Tuesday. In the first example, too, it uses to suggest a transfer the books from you to Mary. In the next example, to indicate it shows a change of place from the speaker's location to Paris. All right. So, again, I was telling you, two and four to explain why something happens is the first use or the first scenario. But in this case, it's telling you preposition two. You can also use it to speak about change in movement or change in direction. For example, whenever every single time you use the verb go, to go, you will use it again too. To go to. Okay, preposition two. The first one is for an infinitive, to go. But the second one is to express the direction where you are going. For example, I need to go to the supermarket. If I say I need to go to the supermarket, I'm speaking wrong. I'm not speaking correctly, right? I need to go park. That's not correct. I need to go to the park, right? The preposition to can be used to express where you're going, right? Asia, using to, okay? Or to, to someone's receiving, right? Take these books to Mary. Can you talk to my mom? Right? So in, you can use it in also those scenarios. Eduardo, please. In this in this case, when you mentioned it, when I want to go to the park, mm -hmm. I cannot say I want to go at park. No. Nope. It's completely wrong too. As I mentioned, the, the for example, I want to go at park or the, can I say the, nom the name of the park? Yeah, no, no se puede, porque at oh, es okay. en, entonces no puedo decir, yo quiero ir en parques, porque at es en, de que ya está en ese lugar, at quiere decir en, 
Entonces no se puede. Tiene que ser to, que es hacia. ¿sí? I'm going to the park o oh, al, para nosotros, ¿verdad? Voy al park. Ahí sería to. Uh -huh. Ok. And then the next scenario where you can use it, right? For infinitives. For infinitives, siempre va a ir el, la preposición to. And also, when you have two verbs, two verbs, one next to the other, you will always use the preposition to to separate them. For example, si yo digo, Nina loves talk on the phone, it's incorrect. Tiene que estar la preposición para hacer este infinitivo. Nina loves to talk on the phone. Siempre que vean dos verbos seguidos, tiene que haber la preposición to in the middle, right? When do you want it dinner? Incorrect. Correct. When do you want to eat dinner? Want es un verbo. To eat es el otro. Right? When do you want it? No se puede. No pueden haber dos verbos seguidos sin un infinitivo. Number three. We are going meet the queen tomorrow. Incorrect. Right? Correct version is we're going to meet the queen tomorrow. Right? And so on and so forth. Okay? And then... You can also use preposition to when you want to compare two things, okay? For example, I prefer coffee to tea. I prefer exercise to diet. <laughs> he likes reading books. Oh, he prefers books to watching movies, right? Preposition to, you can use it to compare two things when you're expressing preference, okay? Or like, okay? So you can use it either or. So as you see, you have many scenarios in which you can use it. Preposition two and four to explain reason, right? Reasons why somebody does something or why something happens. And then preposition two to speak about directions, hacia, right? Also for infinitives, preposition two. And then to compare things and express, and express preference, okay? So here's what you're going to do right now. You're going to go to the breakout rooms and you're going to create a conversation incorporating prepositions two and four in the different scenarios, okay? Whichever scenario you can create there, okay? You're going to have 15 minutes to create this conversation. And when we come back, you're going to share. Requirements. Requisitos para esta conversación. It has to be minimum two to three minutes. Right, don't make me a short conversation. How are you? Ah, fine. Ah, okay. Do you want to go to the park? Yes, I want to buy food for my cat. Okay, but that's not a conversation for intermediate level. These make conversations that make sense. <laughs> I continue, right? Number two, try to use two and four in the different scenarios that we say that we saw it here. Okay. So you're gonna have 15 minutes to create a conversation. It's free topic, the context. You decide, all right? Salas están abiertas a partir de este momento. Tienen 15 minutos para crear sus conversaciones. Pueden ingresar ahora. Vamos ingresando, por favor. Los que están pendientes todavía, sus compañeros los están esperando en las salas. Vamos ingresando, por favor. Hay bastante gente que se queda afuera de las salas. Necesito que ingresen a trabajar.
Hi. Hello. Hello. Gómez. Eh, we can share the screen. Oh my God, give me one moment. <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, try now, please. Carla is our master. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> now you can. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Mire, look the advanced teacher. Yay, that's a lot. <laughs> I will see you guys. Well, we created a conversation and add to the... One moment, please. I'm sorry to bother. Um, how many people are participating in this room? ¿Quiénes ya llevaban su conversación avanzadita? ¿Quiénes ya la habían empezado? César y yo empezaremos. Ah, ok. Vaya, entonces, eh, Mauricio... Lo voy a pasar a usted y a Wendy a otra sala para que trabajen ustedes dos aparte, para que sean dos y dos, ¿ok? Hello. No voy a poder participar porque estoy trabajando en este momento. Ah, no ok. Vaya, entonces si usted se sale de la sala, Mauricio, para que no le cuente a usted tiempo en la sala. Y Wendy se puede quedar ahí. Usted se queda entonces, eh, César Emerson, si la incorporan en la conversación, please. Y le voy a dar cinco minutos extra hasta las y treinta, right? Para que puedan reorganizar. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Uh -huh.
Okay, now that we're back, we're gonna listen to the conversations you created. We're gonna begin with room number two. We have Eduardo Magaña and Juan Carlos Herrera. You can begin, please. <clears throat> okay. Okay. <clears throat> hey, hey. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, hello, how are you? Uh, <laughs> hello, Eduardo, how are you? I am doing really great. I am chilly moment. What about you? Uh, uh, good, good, good. Uh, I comment I, I, uh, I in a trip in USA. Oh, you are so interested. So tell me, how long time have you been in to United States? Yes, I come because I I want to to improve my English level. Okay, you only to travel just to improve your English level, my friend? Or would you like to visit your family too? Tell me about the three yeah. so interesting about the United States. Uh, yes, um, I uh, also this uh, I visit my fam family here and I I have uh, relative in Europe too, but I prefer to uh, come to USA for the accent. I think it's better to a uh, European. So interesting, I encourage you to try to take advantage of that opportunity because then let me tell you there are a bunch of people that they really want to get this opportunity and think can help you a lot with your to improve your English and get a, a real conversation with another people. And also we can help you uh, for your health because you will get a, 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 a healing moment with your family. And I think you were frustrated about your job. Okay, okay. Uh, same for you, advice, Eduardo. I hope to uh, see you soon, right? Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it that you shared your, about your tree and really enjoy it. Okay, thanks. Very good. <laughs> that conversation was very fluent. You didn't make any pauses. Um, I'm, I'm noticing every day, every day, every time you speak, you're speaking a little bit faster and smoother, right? So that's improvement. Also, I love that you use the context to, in, to incorporate preposition two, preposition four, with verbs, with nouns, and then also for... Uh, Directions. Very good job, guys. Well applied. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So now we're going to check room number three conversation. Um, That's going to be Jose Romero, Carla Sofia, and Nelly Lillibet. Please go ahead. Uh, we shared it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, guys. Are you ready for the next meeting? Yes, I'm ready, but I don't remember what is it. Uh, yes, I'm ready to. I will go to the company for the product first, and then I will go to the meeting at McDonald's. Yes, perfect. We need the product for the presentation. We will have to talk about the advantage of the product for consumer. Of course, were some advantage for the product. I'm going to tell you before the meeting. <laughs> because we don't have a lot of time now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yeah. you're supposed to tell me. <laughs> See you in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Miss, but my my co-workers were carefully with the point if you saw the commas and, and you everything. incorporated and you incorporated the prepositions in this case go to for direction right and for example ready for because it's a noun the next meeting it's a noun right for the presentation also a noun so you use them correctly so that's what matters here um that is the point of the conversations in the groups is that you can practice using what you learn by using your own vocabulary, your own context, right? So very good. Thank you, room number three, for the F word. <laughs> and now we're going to listen to the conversation by room number four. Um, here we have 
Cesar, Emerson, and I'm not sure if Wendy participated also. Okay, teacher. Go ahead. Hi, Cesar. Did you notice that the writer where it is? Hi, Emerson. Yes, man. Yesterday I was watching Moises Urbina and he said that all wheat uh, will be there and the most affect area will be the S and I have a cousin there. I'm going to call her to see how she is. Wait me a moment, please. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Mm. I'm going to call, call her again because she didn't answer me. Wait me a moment. Wendy, answer me, please. I think you're gonna have to improvise. Wendy is saying that she has problems with the audio now. Okay. Okay. Emerson, I couldn't uh, talk with uh, Wendy, but I think that the it sounds uh, it's fine. But uh, we have to uh, be careful all week because we don't know how will be the weather okay uh, yeah i understand is it possible that the rains may cause problem with the lines i just job uh she what she very well okay okay marson uh i will call you uh the next friday okay and be careful okay Okay, be careful too. Bye. All right. <laughs> Thank you for sharing and adapting and improvising. <laughs> that shows, listen, that's what shows that you're learning. Okay. Um, if you are only pra if you are only practicing repetition or if you are only practicing controlled conversations, you cannot measure for sure if you are learning, if you're speaking right. But in this case, you guys are showing all the three rooms that participated tonight. You are showing that you are advancing, that you <laughs> that you are improving. You are adapting, you can improvise, and you continue like nothing happens, right? That's the way it is. When you are speaking in a different language in real life, it's not like you're going to wait for an answer coming from the heaven, right? <laughs> you have the language, you have the grammar, use it, right? So that's how you can prove that you are learning. Very good. Okay, so okay. Mm -hmm. we're going to go with the student's manual right now. We have another activity that we're going to do in the groups. And this one is for this chart on page 23 also. It says, we have this. Discuss the following checklist with areas to consider when you are evaluating a third-party logistics candidate, right? You're going to imagine that you have your own company, your own business that is going to need to hire, you're going to hire a third party logistics, right? So you have created this checklist. So you're going to go into the rooms and you're going to discuss one by one if these points are important points to consider when hiring the new third party logistics. If yes, they are, you mark it. If no, you you mark no, right? But you have to explain why you are designing that. For example, um, is it important for me when I want to select a third party logistics? Is it important for me to have, that they have great references? If I think yes, I got to explain why. If I say no, I got to explain why not. Let's say I say no. No, I don't think it's important that they have great references. Because it's a third party logistics, there is not much competition. So probably the only options we have, they all have to be good by a standard, right? Supposedly. Or if I select 
yes, they need to have great references because personally, I don't hire people that I don't trust. And how can I trust them if I don't have good references, right? So you have to explain why you consider each of these points important or not important when making the decision to hire a third-party logistics, okay? We are going to rearrange the rooms. Uh, so just give me one moment. I'm going to rearrange them. And they are open right now. For this exercise, you're only going to have 10 minutes. Okay. Because we have less time. Para este ejercicio vamos a dar solo 10 minutos. Porque ya está todo hecho. Solo tienen que decidir si es importante ese factor o no. A la hora de decidir si contratan un third party logistics. Y si dicen sí, ¿por qué? Y si dicen no, ¿por qué no? Okay. Pueden ingresar a las salas, tienen 10 minutos para poder discutir estos puntos entre sus compañeros. So, hello. Sorry. What is what page? Oh, is it, the it's page twenty three in the students' manual. Pero le voy a mandar la imagen también a WhatsApp para que la tengan todos. Okay. Ah, oh, perfect. Yes. Just a moment.
Okay, okay, we're all back. Let's hear your answers on this checklist that we have here. Let me share the screen so you can use it as a resume. All right, we're gonna start listening um, room number two. We have Nelly and Jose on room number two. <laughs> Go ahead. All miss. We said for number one, we say yes. For number two, we said yes. For number three, we said no. For number four, we said yes again. Number five, yes. Number six, yes. Number seven, we said not because lead is a certification for the company, not for the three year provider. Okay. Um, you gotta explain at least one or two. Why did you say yes? Why did you say no? Yeah, we were discussing about the number two, okay. if they have a great reference. So we were talking about the the old publicity that we saw in internet about our 3L provider, because nowadays we can find not such a 3PL, but yes, sub, as subcontractista that we call in Spanish. Subcontractors. It's subcontractor that is that is expanded in Latin America. And also we were discussing the number seven. What is the lead certification? If it is, if is it for 3PL or if is it for the company? And we talked that it is a certification for the company as soon as the, the damage that they could provocate it in the environment. And so this certification is, is for the company, not for the 3L provider. Okay. All right. That's that's your opinion. And I think yeah. it's very on point with what you're selecting. Okay. Thank you for sharing, Nelly. Okay. So now we're going to hear the answers and explanations for room number three. In here we have... um. Eduardo, who were you working with? Wendy, una muchacha oh. morenita. Okay, Wendy oh, and Eduardo, está. go uh -huh. ahead. Hello. Hi. Okay, Wendy, you can say. Go ahead, Wendy. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, test teacher number one. Uh, yes. Um, are financed by the company. Number two. Yes. I have to people to able to hire employees. Number three. They have a disaster. Recovery plan and yes, Eduardo. Okay, they offer cross docking capability. Absolutely yes, and also they offer freight for welding services. I think is yes too. Okay. And because uh, when you had a, a a business, the best way to offer a really great uh, service to deliver to all the time you need a free for delivering services. Correct. And also they have experience in the country in which you do business. Absolutely, yes, too. Yes. You need a person, uh, a, a service that can offer you uh, the experience that you don't have in your business. So you want to improve it all the time, the experience in and when you want to export something, for example, in your, your product or abroad, you need a person that know about it. And exactly. Mm -hmm. They have lead leadership in, in energy and environment, envir environmental, I should. <laughs> environmental design. Environmental design <laughs> certification. Uh -huh. Yes, I think in, in this case, we can say no, because I think is most important the experience that you don't have, it doesn't matter if you don't have a certification or not, you don't know do something or you don't need a certification. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's important in 
by no sa a mass, I think. Exactly. It's important but it's not a mass. Um especially because it it doesn't necessarily participate. It doesn't have to do with the actual need of the company, right? Of your company. Teacher. Your company doesn't necessarily need that. Yes? Yes. I have financy play of play on the certification by the minister. No sé si se dice minister of labor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Minister of Labor, correct? Uh -huh. Yes, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Okay, Wendy and Eduardo, good job with delivering your answers and explaining why and why not you would choose each of them. Okay. Okay. So, guys, because of time, we are going to stop here for tonight. I'm going to take attendance. So, please be ready to say here or present. Okay. We're going to go with Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Dairo Jonathan Fuentes, Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Here. <laughs> Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, Miss. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Present, Miss. Jonathan Jose González. Present. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Jose Bernardo López. Present. Jose Carlos Argueta. Here, Miss. Juan Carlos Herrera. Here, Juan José Herrera. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Yeah. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. Sure. I hope you have a great day tomorrow, and I will I'm see you. Too. Thank you, Cesar. Yes, I <laughs> thank you for your, your attendance. <laughs> thank you. All right, I hope you have a great day tomorrow, guys. Get some rest, go to sleep, and I'll see you at night tomorrow. Have a good night. Good morning, teacher. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Blessing. Good night. Blessings. Have a good night.